I wanted to point out something here that I, I guess I should have pointed it out about Hezekiah's appeal to the ten tribes to sof sof, you know, once and for all. They've been so distant from coming to the temple because of uh, Yeravim's institution. Just prevent Am Yisrael from visiting the base of Mikdash. So he told them, "You gotta come, you gotta go." And that was his, that was his letters. And uh, it says that uh, how did the people respond to it? Now, this is kind of ironic. When I delivered my sermon in Hebrew, there was a scoffer there. He started laughing. Me, what are you trying to tell us? This you know, well, we're already told we're not supposed to go to the. They said, make this, we're not visiting the Temple Mount. Who do you think you are, Mashiach, or something like that? And uh, I thought that was funny because that's what the next line says. We read uh, the text of Hizkiyahu's letter, and then it says, The runners were passing through from city to city in the land of Ephraim and Menashe all the way up to Zvulun. Wayihu mas haikim alihem. They were making fun of them. They were laughing at them. Umalihimbam. They were deriding them. See? Spoken log. Yeah, that's what happens. You say this type of idea. Am Yisrael has become so distant from visiting the temple that if you actually have someone get up and say, you know what? It turns out you're supposed to. It's a mitzvah. It's one of the great act of national repentance if we would all rediscover going to the temple. Yet, what do we see? We tell it to Am Yisrael, and you have whole tribes telling you, no, they'll just laugh at you. They think you're nuts. There is a there is a silver lining to this story. Um, about a generation later, we find, in King Josiah's time, uh, his Kiyahu's son was was Menashe, and that was a, a quite a long reign, well, uh, about 50 years or so. And his son Amon reigned for only parts of two years. When Yoshiahu took over, that would be Hiskiahu's great grandson. By then, Yoshiahu ruled what was left of Eretz Yisrael, including parts of the land that belonged to the ten tribes. Apparently, he didn't have complete control over the Samaritans who had settled in or Samaria. They replaced many of the ten tribes, but there were some people here and there, it says, for example, in Shiloh and other places, who remained. Some of the ten, ten tribes, pockets of them, remained in the land of Israel, and Yoshiyahu was their ruler. And we find that when, for example, the first temple was destroyed, and when Gedaliah was in charge, there were even still pilgrims coming from the northern parts of Eretz Israel. It mentions Shiloh, for example. They're coming to the temple, and they mourn the destruction of the temple. So the Assyrian exile basically brought, brought an end to this whole rival temple business, that the Jewish people believed they shouldn't be visiting the temple, that they had other places of worship. Uh, Josiah basically got rid of that. And he got rid of the areas where people had worship traditionally, the areas of the golden calves, even the golden calves had been taken away from, in uh, Dun and in Beidel, and the worship there had been put to an end by uh, Josiah's time, such that when the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, the Jews had finally gotten over this thing. There was no rival Beis HaMikdash, and people in the north used to go there. Okay, good good historical, uh, good historical note 